Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Today I'm here with my buddy Mike Flora. We're going to be talking about him. Mike is a, uh, has a partner that wasn't able to make it today because he's sick, doesn't have coronavirus, we don't believe, but he's sick. And, um, and also they're both firefighters. So they have part-time jobs and they partnered up. They have a business that's growing out there. They're doing some great things out in California, by the way, which you'll get to know more about them. But that's what we're going to talk about today is basically how to be kind of part-time and have partners and how to kind of work through that and grow a successful business. Professional real estate investors know that it's not really about the real estate. In fact, real estate is just a vehicle to freedom. A group of over 100 of the nation's leading real estate investors from across the country meet several times a year at the Investor Fuel Real Estate Mastermind to share ideas on how to strengthen each other's businesses, but also to come together as friends and build more fulfilling lives for all of those around us. On today's show, we're going to continue our conversation of fueling our businesses and fueling our lives. I'm glad you're here. Hey, Mike, welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing, Mike? Good, good to see you. So sorry your partner in crime couldn't make it today. Yeah, yeah, he got a stuffy nose, kind of sick. Uh, highly likely it's the cold, but I always, I kind of tease him I'm all, he got it. No. Yeah, no matter no, yeah. if you sneeze or anything today, you got to joke a little bit about. Yeah. Not that it's a joking matter, but you know. No, uh, absolutely. We'll see. We'll hey, being, see. A so. being a firefighter or medic, we see some things we kind of joke to keep the light. So that's just a, that's, that's how we do. Yeah, that. yeah. Well, it, it's interesting because uh, yeah, I told you, you know, obviously my wife and I are partners. A lot of people in real estate have partners, whether it's a spouse or a brother or family member or uh, good friends even, right? So uh, it's going to be interesting to talk about that because what you're doing really um, is, is common and a lot of people struggle with some components of it, like who does what and what happens if you don't agree on things and how do you deal with contractors and employees that, you know, they don't know who to go to, who the boss is and things like that. It's going to be really, uh, really kind of an interesting uh, conversation. I think that people get a lot of value out of. Before we jump in though, tell us about your background. How did, how did uh, two firefighters found, find their way into uh, real estate investing. Yeah. So, um, at fir first I had, a, I bought a condo down in San Diego. Market was low, knew nothing about real estate, bought that, you know, and then I, um, married to my wife now and I kind of moved out and I saw, you know, Hey, I bought it here. Look what it just did. And I didn't have to do anything. And I kind of realized I'm like, this is a pretty powerful thing. I bought it in 2010, you know, and sold it, you know, after the market started going back up. Anyways, a good buddy of mine, I won't mention his name. He runs a pretty big show out here in California. Um, started talking to him and then I, I, I just kind of got the bug for it when I saw the power of spending no time making that type of money just off of being an accident. So I talked to him, started reading and then, I, and then um, John was there, you know, at the firehouse. We're both Marine Corps veterans. We're both paramedics. Like we both have young kids and John's a highly dri driven uh, person and he wanted more in life than just the fire department. Same with me. And I'm like, Hey, you want to do, let's, let's do this thing. You know, let's do it. We had zero <laughs> clue. Like, so I started listening to some Sean Terry stuff. Like let's, let's at least just start with this wholesale thing. Let's see where this takes us. And we were reading and learning and then finally like, okay, well let's put this postcard thing together. We kind of did that. Yeah. You know, sent out like, I think our first one was like 500 cards or something like that. And I had a couple calls and then I was taking the call. Then he was taking call. Like we were kind of trying to do everything together and like, Oh, you do this one. Then you do this one. And then we kind of, once we got better at it, we did a couple wholesales and got a little bit of money and then we got better at it. And then we did a rehab and then we were both in on the rehab and we were like stepping on each other's toes. And then we we're like, look, what are we doing here? You take one, I'll just get the other one. And then, okay. And I'll do marketing and list work and books. And that's John, you know, he's, he's got his degree in, in uh, I don't know exactly what, but it might be accounting. <laughs> Something boring, you say. It sounds yeah. like you're, that's what you're thinking. And I, just, and I go, dude, that's you, man. I like talking to people. So then like we kind of split that up. So I answered the phones, went on a lot, a lot more appointments, um, did all that stuff. Um, and then we just split the houses up, you know, did stuff like that. Um, started working more as a team and staying out of each other's, out of each other's way in a sense. Yeah. Um, you know, and you kind of have to do that, you know, so. Right. Um, and then there's communication with all those things, but I never, I don't even see John like that much at all. You know, maybe once every couple of weeks we're on the phone, obviously all the time, but we're just trusting in, in our roles and it just started to flow more. Obviously you learn from your mistakes. Yeah. So let's talk about that a little. So early on, did you guys, did you guys butt heads a little bit? Like when you were stepping on each other's toes or? No, we were just like, 
no, it worked out really well. I, that's another r- really good thing. I just, John's personality and me and our lives are very, very similar. So like we both have, um, you know, five and seven year olds. We've been doing it for about, we've been doing it seriously for about, about three and a half years, probably four years, four and a half years total from when we st- first started getting into it. Yep. But uh, we, our lives are very identical. Like he has a five and seven year old. We're both Marines. We're both firefighters. We, we know what's going on in our job. So we get along very, very well. Uh, and his role, he's really good at that. And in my role, I'm just really good at that. And we just know to leave each other alone and it all just works out. Um, yeah, that's good. Cause you know, the truth is a lot of people, we, we talked about this uh, a little bit ahead of, ahead of time. And if you're listening to this, you probably, well, this will resonate with you too. Sometimes folks get into business together with their friends and they're so alike that they're good at the same things and they're bad at the same things. And some of the things they're both bad at are critical things to the business. Like if you, if you're, both people were completely unorganized and, you know, more like sales focused, but nobody could manage cash flow or manage the books or even manage contractors, maybe like that. That's a problem, right? Yeah, it, that, that is. Yeah. It's a, it's a big problem. We learned right away when we started stepping on each other's toes, trying to two people trying to work one, one rehab. And then like, you, you know, contractors will call and you call in each other. And then you're like, look, we just need to just stay out of each other's stuff. I'm like, Oh, this one's yours. And then, you just never have to worry about it outside of the mind. He's got it. You know, he's got it. We've been through the same things. Really the only different things he's doing is list work, marketing books, and I'm phone all the sales stuff. And I learned, know a little bit more about like title stuff and going through the, the escrow processes and, and what I can and can't do with certain things. And yeah. we just really focus on things. Like, he doesn't have to worry about that as that really at all if he doesn't want to, but right. we're both pretty passionate about the, the real estate game. And like we sell all our own properties. We flat flee, flee list. Um, you know, we, we deal with all the contractors. It's just me and John. And, and now I have, um, you know, going over the vacant stuff that I've, I've done. I have a driver and she vets things, but I don't, I don't ever see her. I think I've seen her one time in the last six months, like just to give her supplies. But yeah. I kind of let her roam and I can see everything she does. But uh, other than that, it's just me and John. You know? Yeah. We do That's it good. all. That's good. And you, you, you know, the other t- thing that happens with people sometimes, and honestly, my wife and I have had this problem a little bit over the years is she's really good at the back office stuff. She's really our CFO. We kind of make this joke, she, but she's very conservative. So we make this joke that if it was her running it, she never would have bought a house because she's so risk averse. And yeah. if it was me running it, we would have like, our books would have been so screwed up and like <laughs> our cash position would be so messed up that we would have been out of business like a yeah. long time ago. But the truth is, is sometimes people have this issue where they're good at something, but they don't necessarily enjoy doing it, right? So they're kind of like, they, then they see, hypothetically, it could be that somebody is like, well, the sales and marketing side is the sexy side of this business, and I'm stuck at the office answering phones or something like that, right? So I think sometimes people take their partner, I, I, maybe I'm talking about my wife here, maybe I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying anything. Sometimes you take your partner for granted that just like, well, just do it because you're good at it, you know? And it's like, well, but I hate it. And, uh, you know, I think we all have to have the wisdom to know that like, Hey, you're good at this. Do you like this? Or, you know, cause the truth is, is your business, your business better served hiring somebody else to do those things that you don't like to do. And you're not good at than trying to force one of the partners or one of the owners to do it. Yeah. And, and we've had that discussion. We're like, well, do we, do we get someone on? Like we, we know we can't grow. We can only take a certain amount of deals at a time. Look, we got 72 to 96 hours of the firehouse. We got a wife and two kids with no family to help. We get home and, and then you might have two appointments that day and you're also selling two other of your rehabs and then you're dealing with the contractors on top of all these things. And it's really hard to set time blocks with, the, with, with all these things going on. Yeah. Um, it's very difficult, you know, and then we thought like, you know, if we left the fire department, we could have these time blocks set and everything, but we just stay in our lane. I'm kind of working, you know, like I said, I see him once every couple of weeks, we're on the phone, but we stay in our own lanes and everything flows yeah. really easy that way. We're not like at, at, at each other's desks, which we, we'd be more pro productive that way. But like, I don't know, we just, it's, it's better to know, I trust you, you got it. It's going to get done. Right. And right. You got your thing. I trust you. You got it. You're going to get it done. Are your schedules at the firehouse? Are they, are they, um, do you guys work at the same time or do you offset each other? Same time. We work on the same, we work at the same time. We're both a crew. There's a crew and B crew. And then okay. we work on at the same time. So he'll be at, he'll be there when I'm there. Um, and then, you know, you're trying to get stuff done. Sometimes you get, you know, fire or whatever. We don't do that much there really at all, you know, but, uh, you know, phone rings or whatever. <laughs> the phone rings or whatever. I so admit that. that. <laughs> Some things like that. Uh, well, that is true. I, I don't want to take, I mean, it's a, obviously an amazing, um, uh, you know, um, thing to be a fire, a firefighter, a public servant for sure. 
but I think it's, it's kind of well known that you work, like you said, two or three days back to back to back, you're on these long shifts and there's time, you know, in the middle to fill in with some other things if you have to. Yeah. And we've, we've actually spoken to our, our, our fire chiefs and things about that. And they're, they're also supportive of people having another life outside of the firehouse because right. you, know, you work a lot of hours, you're there for days, but then you have days off, you know, so right. it, it's feasible to do. And they understand that as long as it's not getting in the way of, of training time or anything or, or the, the business time, you know, when you have a, when you have a free moment, usually they're, they're okay with you handling certain things that need to get done if you ask them. Right. Um, so it right. does work out, you know, but you, you don't got all day to, you don't got all day to completely focus on, things yeah. you want to get done. So we kind of figured out, me and John kind of figured out certain thresholds of how, um, how much we could handle in a sense with, with like no employees, you know, yep. certain times it got hectic and other times. So we got our, so, you know, we started getting the marketing down and we just kind of chip away. And our main goal really is here in California, just things don't cash flow very well. We just want to um, sell, get the money. We, you know, do some stuff and up, up our lifestyle and then put those into, you know, rental income type properties. Right. Right. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about um, uh, just kind of managing this with a job. We talked about that a little bit now, Uh, but just, you know, talk about kind of some time blocking strategies or things that you do because whether somebody's working nine to five or whether they're working, you know, 96 hours back to back to back, like you guys do sometimes you, you have to say, okay, now I have this time to focus and I need to set aside time to do this this activity, right? For a perfect example is, you know, the marketing has got to get done and it's got to be consistent, right? So just talk about like the importance of, of blocking time off to make sure things get done. Yeah. John has a lot more time blocking things than I do. I still have, have mine. Um, Cause he's got to have, you know, the list, the list work um, when the texts are going to go out and things like that. And he has certain, certain time frames, and he, he does very, very well with that. I'm a little more organized, but mine's kind of like, okay, when my, when's my phone going to ring? You don't have a time block for when my phone's going to ring. I'm sure, dealing with yeah. when's that appointment going to be set? When am I, you know, I'll set follow-ups, you know, and follow-ups is key in this business as we all know with, with yep. the sellers. And then I'm trying to schedule all those things out for appointments that make sense. But sometimes it's like, you know, you might have, I got to, I want to meet tomorrow at this time. You just got to drop what you're doing and go and do all that, you know, best I can. Um, and that's how a lot of my stuff works out or I'll check other houses. I'm, I live closer than John does to a lot of our areas where houses are. So I'm out, I'm out in the field a little bit more than John or I'll take over and do certain things like that. But um, yeah, we'll set time blocks and then, you know, coordinating with my family too. I mean, that's another whole nother partner we got to coordinate with because I'm gone. I can be gone. Like I was gone for six days straight the other day um, at the firehouse. They needed people to work. And then you got all these other things with the real estate and then you got the rehabs and then we're selling them and I'm dealing with escrow and I got paperwork and sometimes we're like, Hey, you need to sign this. You need to sign this. And I'm deal. I deal with a lot more of that stuff too. And who knows, you could have seven things to sign in the next five minutes when you want to set and plan to get things done with family and stuff. But um, it's very hectic. Um, I kind of thrive off of it sometimes. It's kind of sad to say, but at the same time, we know like we can't grow. We know we can't grow, but we love it. We love what we're doing. We get along. And we're living a good life at this time. If whenever we decide to grow, I think it's when we're going to leave the fire department. We just can't manage anyone. We can't see them. I know there's a lot of people out there like, you can do that. Believe me. But for us, I, I'm very personable. Um, you know, I think we still have a little bit of that blue collar mindset in certain things where we want to be there. We have to be there. Like virtual wholesaling is like crazy to me in a sense, but it's like well, people mm-hmm. do it. They're very successful, but I don't know, everyone's a little different, but we're doing very well. You know, we're, yeah, yeah. We're, so how, talk about uh, your, your wives are not involved in the business, right? No, um, they're not. Um, they do little things here and there, but it kind of fades out. And I'm not pressuring, I'm not going to pressure our wives to do something that, sure. and then, you know, but um, I'm not, I'm not going to keep pressuring them to do things either, Mike. We'll just leave that one alone. For- <laughs> well, my point is, is, uh, you know, when, when a spouse is involved in the business, the good the good part is, is they understand, they understand your, uh, like when you get spread thin, they kind of get it like, okay, I know you got, you got to do this, got to do that, got to go do that, got to go check on that house, got to, got to get this done. When they're not involved in the business, it just takes a really, um, you know, it takes a, a spouse that really is flexible and kind of gets that, you know, you're trying to do this to improve our lives, right? You're not just like, yes. they don't expect you to just come home and be like hundred percent family all the time. Cause you, you really have two jobs, right? Absolutely. That's a, that's a really good point you made. And, um, and me and my wife, we've had discussions and John with his wife, and then we joke about it. And there's times where they're, they're, you know, they get annoyed with it and it's like, you know, 
we just went to Hawaii, didn't we? You know, and you got to get out there and do, you got to get out there and do these things if we want to continue that. And we're setting things up for the future. And as time goes on, you know, they're, they're way more understanding. They, they get it and they love it and they want it. And the things that we're, we're seeing that are beneficial and our lives are better. Um, but, you know, when you got the young kids, not a lot of family around and you're just bailing after you've been gone for 48 hours, sometimes yep. it doesn't go over the best, but it just happens. You never know when your phone's going to ring. You never know when you're going to have to go get, get it done and get, do something like that. So it's kind of hectic, chaotic. We thrive on it. Um, but having a partner, obviously with me and John, we, we back each other up on vacations because we can all, we can do everything. You know, um, he's a lot better, but he, it's easier for him to teach me to do some things and I can teach him to do that, or I can pass everything off to him. And we're always CC'd on emails with escrow, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, we just handle it all. Our knowledge is, is pretty high. Our business is, our knowledge is higher. Our business is low. If you want to kind of look at it that way, but um, you know, we just don't run a ton of deals, maybe two a month um, on the rehab side. We're getting away from the rehab thing, obviously. Um, this, well, this you're in California, thing. Southern California too, which you kind of mentioned up front. So your deal, deal, I guess, values and spreads tend to be bigger. Yes. And probably, you know, we're not going to spend this whole show talking about the coronavirus, but mm. uh, you know, there's a lot of unknown things right now. You guys are on lockdown in California as the time we're yeah. recording this. And uh, you know, uh, usually when the retail, when the real estate market starts to, starts to uh, take a downturn, it happens in California first, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, huge swings, you know, uh, there's a guy out here, he's, his name's, uh, I'll, I'll drop his name. Bruce Norris is a chart yeah. guy, really big guy. And like, and you look at the, the swings in California compared to the rest of the country. And it's just like, it's like over a hundred and something percent different swings up or down or here and there. It's just so volatile that you got to be careful if you want to try and do some full rehabs in a time like this, I'm staying away from it um, for sure. And kind of rotating over to some term, more terms type deal with low money down and some better exit strategy. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, we're going to be creating a lot of content rolling out on flip nerd here over the next mm -hmm. several weeks. And that's just the general kind of, you know, that's the, that's the general guidance that I'm giving people is kind of speed up that cash to cat, that kind of closing to closing conversion. So your cash cycles are faster if you're yeah. doing really long, really big rehabs, like it's just more risky. I'm not saying that they're, if, if you, if you understand your market, every market's different, right? So if your market isn't hit as bad or, mm -hmm. um, or you're, you, you have a unique situation that you kind of understand it is what it is. Right. But yeah. I think just to kind of stay liquid, like you said, mix in some terms, like negotiate longer closing periods. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, who, who knows in times of, uh, uncertainty. That's what you have. That's how you mitigate risk is you kind of have a couple levers, which is price and, and terms, right. Or kind of a couple of the big ones. Absolutely. That, yeah. That's my opinion here. It's just, yeah, you could, you could drop 20, 30 K. I don't know. I don't think that's coming immediately, but with how another thing, if you, you put some up now, you think you're going to get it and whole tail it. And it's like, look, it's going to, you could have 60, 60 day escrows coming up with everyone trying to liquidate their money on refinances and the lenders are getting yeah. back and all that stuff. But a lot more, who knows what's really going to be going on soon, but we'll get to that. Like you said, there's a whole, whole nother thing coming. I'm sure everyone in investor fuel and investors all over are going to be having talks for months coming here. Yeah. The truth is, is, uh, you know, th I think there's a golden opportunity right now. It doesn't mean that the road there isn't bumpy. You kind of like go down this bumpy road and there's a storm going. And then in the distance, there's this rainbow coming through the clouds, right? I mean, that's, that's, uh, not everybody is going to have that same path, but the truth is, is the people that are running away, are the ones that are going to miss out on the opportunity. Those that are saying, Hey, let's get our ship tightened up here. And um, I'm going to need to cut some costs and lean things out. But more than anything, I'm going to lean into lean into advertising lead generation mm -hmm. uh, because those same sellers that said no last month uh, to your offer that was 20 or 30,000 less than what they wanted are that offers looking better now, right? Or they're yeah. a little more flexible than they were. And a lot of the wholesalers or competitors out there that, we're dabbling are they're, they're just going to disappear. Right. So yeah, I, I think so. The market's going to shift here for sure. Oh, for sure. And I think, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, newer wholesalers or wholesalers or people that just didn't have anything too liquid to keep going with their business and a lot of overhead. It's, it's going to be tough for them um, yep. for sure. And I, I won't mind some of those guys going away out here in California. Yeah, No so, doubt. No doubt. It'll open up some opportunities uh, for sure. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. truthfully, that's, that's the market I came into in 08 we started in. We were naive. We didn't really know what we didn't know, but a lot of people were running out of the fire. We're running into it just like you're, you're used to, right? A little analogy there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but um, the truth is, is it served us well. And um, you know, there was a point where 
I don't remember exactly what our advertising was at when we first started. We were like three or 5,000 a month. And then I remember one month we literally just went to like 22 or 25,000. We just literally like four or five X it. And that, that really kind of started the story of our success was like, we're going to, we're going to get real serious about this. Yeah. And, uh, it served us well because a lot of people were, were running the other way. And, um, you know, we had spent some time getting well capitalized or having access to some lines of credit and stuff that were a little more stable. And, uh, and you know that that opportunity, something like that, is going to happen again here for sure. Yeah, it, when when is is the is I think coming in the summer is when we're really going to start to feel that late spring here, summer. In my opinion, at least out here, um, just from at least what I'm seeing now, and who knows, the virus could scare a lot more people once it starts moving into, into yeah. neighborhoods, and you might see a lot more cancels and everyone holding on. Who knows? We're, we're not even going to get that. But I see it as a challenge right now, Mike. To be honest. Um, I don't have a lot of rentals. I know a lot of people with rentals are hurting and they're gonna, it's wheel and deal time. Um, I talked to John and, and uh, another guy, Tyler, he's another firefighter with, with investor fuel. And yeah, and, um, you know, it's like, we don't have a lot of rentals, but it's like, don't wait for the government or anybody else. Like start talking to your tenants, start talking to your lenders, deal with them, make deals, get it done. Just get it done any way you can. They tell you, you can't have workers. Your contractors need to put food on the table, figure it out. Right. Get it done. There is a way to get something done, whether the government's telling you can or can't. Just don't be an idiot. You know, right, right. Look, don't say, hey, all 15 of us, we're going to drink beers after we, after we work on the house right now and be at this big social gathering. You, know, you can get things done safely and securely. And, sure. And still make, you know, everyone still has to put food on the table. So yep. the government's going to say one thing and, uh, you know, we should follow it the best we can. But at the same, at the end of the day, you know, things need to get done. It's a big, this is a challenge right now. And, and look, there are people out there with, big problems. I talked to Tyler and, and John, me and him, we've seen people that's had some huge problems in their life. We're talking, you know, let someone hand you their dead kid and be like, Hey, they're dead. You know, let tell someone they just lost their loved one when you pick them up off the freeway, like we do. And it's like, those, those people got some real problems, you know, right. people that are dying from the coronavirus. Look, we're going to get through all this for sure. Um, and uh, just hold on tight. I mean, it's, it, I think this is going to be a lot faster too. Um, for the for the initial turnaround and, and we'll be okay. Everyone's hurting, but figure it out. Everyone, you can figure. Use your brain, figure it out, and yeah, like you said, then we'll cash in after we get through the bumpy times here. Yeah, that's the opportunity if we can solve problems. That's that's really what we do. Is normally we're solving problems for we're still solving problems for sellers. Now we have to solve a few problems for ourselves too. But mm -hmm. that'll lead to truthfully, that's going to lead to more opportunity. No doubt about it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, Mike, uh, you guys have been in Investor Fuel for a little over a year now, right? Coming up, coming up on a year, May, the May, the May point okay. is, um, oh, you know what we joined? Yeah. Coming up on a year. I think okay, we're about okay. eight or nine months now. Yeah. Yeah. So would you mind just kind of sharing a testimonial of, uh, how the group is, how the group has, uh, benefited you guys? Oh, it's, it's fantastic. In, in, immediately when we started, we got into the texting. We didn't even know about texting. We're really bad at the computer stuff, but just all the people in Facebook, you see me on Facebook all the time. I'm sure all the other investors, I'm a real clown on there, but I like ruffling some feathers, but just posting content. There's so much content everyone has and everyone's, it's all it takes. Every time you go, um, when I'm there, there's always like one or two, three things you're going to get. And it's going to change the way you do things in your, in your business with the real estate side. You know, you're not there. It's like every presentation is not going to give you everything, but you're there for those, those three nuggets each time or whatever. And everyone's got them and, and you're all just kind of sharing them. One nugget might not be the one you want, but anyways, there's just so much information and and we always talk about shiny things, but there's always something to take from it for sure. Um, it's, it's helped us exponentially in our business here and implementing certain things and, and the resources, you know, just everyone just talking with each other. That's a huge thing. Like talk to this guy. Talk, there's always someone you can, Hey, that's the guy you want to talk to. That's the guy you want to get. And clearly it's, it's, it's good stuff. Awesome. So I've nothing but positive things to say about that um, for sure. Um, yeah, man, we appreciate you guys being members out there. I think that that's what it's all about, especially in a time like today, right? Where there's a lot of uncertainty going on is people just coming together saying, look, here's how I'm going to deal with this. Here's how we're going to deal with this. And um, I think that is really what uh, a group like ours is about is, is getting through. I mean, it's, it's great to get together with like-minded people and hang out and have happy hours and drinks and stuff like that. That's all fun stuff. Blow off steam. Like yeah. we, I think there's a part of a mastermind like ours that people love that social aspect to kind of get together with people like me and hang out, <clears throat> get away, maybe travel to another market um, and hang out. But when it comes down to it, the real value is um, can I talk to friends that will help me get through 
a challenging time when I hit that, right? So we celebrate the good times, no doubt. But the bad times or the down times or the low times, which we all have, whether it's the coronavirus or whether it's yeah. our biggest lender just went away or who knows, whatever it could be, that is where I think uh, a group like ours adds a lot of value. Being a part of our group is is like, hey, we're going to get through this together. Let's work through it. And here's how we're going to handle it, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think people are going to find the, the, even a bigger value with all this. Just like you said, yep. everyone's helping each other through the tough times, you know? Yeah, yep. that's a good point, Mike. Yeah. Yep, yep. Cool, buddy. Well, hey, if, if folks want to, to reach out to you, uh, where, uh, where can they go to connect with you? Um, really, it's uh, just really Facebook. I'm not a big computer guy or anything. Or, or uh, Just hit me up on Facebook, uh, Mike Flora. I'm, all, I'm a part of Investor Fuel on there, obviously. But that's really it for me. And same with John, you can find him on Facebook and then, you know, we can connect that way. Send me a instant, uh, direct message or, or anything like that. Cool, buddy. We'll, we'll put your link in the show notes down here. Yeah. So, hey man, so you're, you're, uh, as a firefighter, you're, you're kind of on the front lines of a lot of this stuff. I'm sure, uh, you're out there to, to help people out. So appreciate, appreciate the extra effort during a time like this for sure. Yeah. And one thing I had a buddy, he got it. He said it was nothing. So don't worry about it. Don't be scared. So yeah, cool. Yeah. All right, guys. Awesome, hey, yeah. thanks for thanks for spending time with us today. All right, Mike. Thank you. Appreciate it. See you and everybody that's out there. Hey, we um, appreciate you to join us on the show today. Kind of goes without saying right now when we're in the middle of this uh, coronavirus issue, and more importantly, just the reaction to all the stuff that's going on, all the shutdown stuff. It's created a lot of fear, right? We we get that. So uh, we hope you've enjoyed uh, watching the show. We have literally over 1,500 video podcasts across FlipNerd for the, over the past six and a half years, whether it's this show, the Investor Fuel Show, or uh, FlipNerd.com. Uh, that's where most of our shows are. But uh, just use this time to immerse this in, in improving yourself, whether it's physically, spending time with your family, educating yourself. We have so much free information out there. We'd love for you to take advantage of it. If, if you got some value out of this show, we'd love it if you subscribe, uh, give us a positive review. And until then, we'll see you on the next show. Take care. Are you an active real estate investor? If so, and you want to latch on to the power of surrounding yourself with over a hundred of the nation's leading real estate investors, all committed to building stronger businesses and living richer, fuller lives, you should jump on a call with us to learn more about Investor Fuel. Simply visit investorfuel.com to get started.